Hi everyone. I'm. Uh, I just popped out to the greenhouse to have a little look at it, and um, it'll be a part two uh, of the garden with only one difference. As you can see, it's night time. The time I make at the moment in English time is, if I can see it, 10:22, which means. On the continent it's 11.22. I don't know how these are going to turn out. It's, so, it's really comparatively mild tonight. I don't know if we can see the thermometer. There we are. There's the temperature. 10 degrees Celsius. Or well, if you like, uh, 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't ask me what it is in uh, Arumia. Yeah, they don't use that now. So anyway, let's have a look inside. I was a bit, I was getting a bit, well, I was a bit sort of itchy to do some things. I topped up one of the fish tanks, and I thought, well, let's go out and have a look at the, the greenhouses in not natural light. That light. Tell me what that is. That's a mixed uh, mercury vapour self balanced bulb, and that's by Osram. Well, a couple of these, and I think well, they're ideal for, for the greenhouse. They'll also turn on the fluorescent without it going bang. There we are. Fluorescent lights on now. And as I'm mainly making this for. Uh, my bulb friends are interested, and a lot of them are interested in the plants as well. Um, it was good, particularly Alex and Chris. I know you both are interested in plants. Um, go back to the um, the name of that plant, which I can't remember now. But Chris had the name off off exactly right, and Alex has got. Some nice cacti growing indoors, which I'm amazed. I didn't know you could grow them indoors. Well, these ones are all right. I say this is, uh, to my mind, a sad time of year. You're coming up, we're in winter now, and um, the plants are obviously not at their best. I'm not going to be very technical at this stage. If anyone wants the name of them, um, you know, give us. Give us a shout. Um, I'll try and get, try and uh, give it a, and uh, oh, you're you, uh, um, Neon Young. He's interested in plants as well. I mustn't leave him out. Wouldn't be fair. I know one of you had a um, Venus fly plant, uh, Venus fly trap, but I can't remember which one it was of you. But I know you did show one of these. They're the plants that are in insectivorous plants. They um, have like how we put it like claws, and they close up on a fly or that. And it was definitely uh, one of you. I think it was uh, Danian Young. I'm pretty sure, but it might have been Chris. I'm not sure. You'll you'll correct me. I feel sure. I hope you do. Anyway, let's have a look. Don't look at this side. This is the junk side. Where all the pots are. It's like a madhouse in here. Don't worry, I'm mad. So, and Of course, we've got a power cut. We've got a lamp there. And that's um, quite an old... I say old. It's a few years old. It's a um, cell beam unit. I if you can see it. There's what it's like inside. Another bulb, I suppose, to add to my collection. I'm just trying to guess how many bulbs I've got, and I was saying uh, we've got quite a lot. I know, um, I know, Alex has, has got a, quite a few, more than quite a few, and he go, he he did a um, little video on his collection. He's got a lot. My one, I honestly don't know because. 
perhaps I'm cheating, but I've got a box of little tiny torch bulbs. And in the box, well, <laughs> I can show you the picture of the box with them in. There's quite a few. But as I said before, I collected them over many years. And, um, you know, there's things you do pick up over the years and the collection gets bigger and bigger. As you see, I also collect plants as well. And telephones. And barometers. And thermometers. And many other things. But what I don't do, I don't kick a bloody football about. I've said this before, I hate sport of all types. Anyway, I haven't got time for that. Yeah, anyway, I'll carry along here and have a little look. A few more plants we've got there. That white thing's a heater. It's a fan heater, which so far this year has had very little use, which I'm glad to say. At the back here, uh, now the, there's an orchid. Don't ask me what one it is, but um, we were talking about or orchids the other day. And um, there's an example of mine. No, I've only got the one orchid. I don't find them an easy plant to grow. And of course, I can't get away from bulbs for five minutes. There's a few at the back there. These are flash bulbs. Well, not all of them, but a lot of them are. And I would advise to keep them outside in case they um, fired off, which they could do, and they could start a fire. So they're outside. They burst into flames here. There's nothing much they can catch. The greenhouse frame is aluminium and glass. That buzzing noise you can hear is an aerator under that plant which needs a bit of a drink is um, pumped by a company called Weezer. There's the name. It's a German pump. Very good quality. They really are good quality pumps. To buy them now you'd need an arm and a leg. They're quite expensive. I'm trying to root the plant in the front here. That's um, aloe variegata, the partridge-breasted aloe, to give it its common name. I've shown all these many times. They're the baby's toes. Fenestrarias. Fenestraria means a window plant. Fenestrias means, means a window. Uh, not in England, but it is on the continent. France, Germany, and it's from the Latin Fenestra. And there's the plant that's got windows on it. You look at that one. There's the window at the top. It's a translucent part of the leaves. And the idea of that is to filter sunlight through into the chlorophyll because normally where these plants come from in the macula land they are virtually covered in sand with just the top showing you can't do it over here because they would just rot but that is where they get the name from a few at the back there As I say, I wasn't going to make this too technical or too botanical. But I know you know these, these botanic names and plants, which I think is very good. Um, so I give them where I can and where I know them. And if they've got any idea of the name, derivations and that. A few of these plants over here are called Echinopsis. And that large one, in fact, they're getting a bit too wet. So 
I must have a, a leak in the window so I'm going to have to move move those. Yeah, funny noise there. I don't know what that is. It could be it's raining outside. Yeah, I think it's raining. Not to worry. There's a few more plants there. Those are small cuttings of that um, aloe variegator. Now I've shown these many times. They're, they're Zeriosicios. Zero, I believe, means drought resistant. If I'm wrong with any of these names, someone shout up and say you're wrong. Because I'm not infallible. Um, but that's what I think is Zeriosicius danguliae. There's a plant native of uh, Madagascar. I understand it's quite a rare plant, but in here it tends to grow quite well. Coming along a bit further, we've got a Prescia. That plant, believe it or not, is a true cactus. It's a cactus with leaves. If you look very carefully, you will see spines, thorns sticking out. It's a true cacti, well, what I should say is a true cacti, a true leafy cacti. Never know what we're going to find in here. Here we have an Agara derma. Agara means silver. Silver is Argentium. Um, where silver was found was Argentina, which has got its name from Argentia, silver, so it's Argentina. And this plant is Agara derma. Translated means silver skin. That's exactly what it is. Silver skin. Anyhow, as I said before, I don't want to bore you or make you all go to sleep. Um, at the back there, we've got a Tradescantia. That was named after a botanist, John Tradescant. Hence the name Tradescantia. I don't know the second name, but it's quite a hardy plant. You can't grow it outside where well, you can't in England. I don't know about Germany or France. You might get away with it, but I don't think you will. I think it has, has to be well, unless you're in the other uh, south of France. I've seen enormous cacti in the south of France and round um, northern Italy. Um, I'm trying to think of the towns now: Vallecrosia, Ventimiglio. They grow cacti outside. It's fantastic. I tell you what, I'm more at home on the continent than I am over here. I've travelled quite a few places on the continent um, and really enjoyed it. But, uh, yeah, Ventimiglio. Anyhow, don't wander down the garden. I don't know whether you're going to see much walking down the garden. Or whether I'm going to be walking down the garden if it's chucking it down with rain, which it it's raining. I don't know whether probably can't see, see much, so I won't. Um, I'll end the video here. I think there's a light coming out of the greenhouse, just showing the garden up. See the greenhouses down the end, but um, I will give them a miss now. Perhaps do one, perhaps tomorrow. I'm getting cold as well. There's one of my tree ferns. Plant from New Zealand or Australia. There's two there. Kept their leaves well actually. Here you don't have to protect them. Well that's, that's what I found. I know some places in, in England you have to cover them up with um, floss type materials to keep the frosts out. But here it's fairly sheltered. I don't know whether you can see the Apuntias. I'll show those in the daytime. They've grown quite a bit as well. 
see a greenhouse is down there, but that'll give you an idea of what the place looks like at night. I don't know whether you can see the sky. Well, I last showed the sky, it was lovely, clear and blue, but uh, <laughs> not now. It's cloudy and I'm getting wet. So I'll bid all you good people good night. Take care. And hopefully catch you in the morning. And I'm going to turn in now. Thanks for watching. I'm going to upload this as well, so that'll take some time. I'm going to turn around and see the outside of the greenhouse. The old mercury vapour lamp there. Fluorescent lamp. This, that one's actually a um, main standby. It's got built in a nickel cadmium battery, which when it's off, it is kept charged up. So if you get a power cut, that lamp, not as bright as that, but the um, the emergency battery takes over and it lights up. It's probably the half brightness as it is now, but it's, it's enough to see your way into the greenhouse. I know I picked that up, up at the boot cell. All my stuff's come from boot cells. I've repaired it, got them going. Look towards the back of the house. The front, back door. We'll pop in and turn the lights off. There's something I was, I was going to say, I don't know what it was now. I know I chatter quite a lot, can't help it. Now I'm going to leave these on because I'm going to go in and put an extension lead on to that heater and see my electrics inside, which um, they were done, I'd done these years ago and uh, you'll probably recognise what type of sockets I've got. I wonder what country those ones came from. And that fuse box, very, very old. Perfectly safe, but it's old. The fuses are these. Those two white things are the fuse. We never used that type of fuse in England, but it was quite popular on the continent. And you, to change the fuse, you'd unscrew it, take the middle bit out, which held the fuse wire, and either replace it or solder a new wire in it. The two white things on the right of it are two switches, which you can turn the power off from either fuse. They're perfectly safe. And of course, the old English 13 amp plug and socket or stecker I believe it is in German. This plug there would be what would be called a um, oh god I've forgotten the name don't worry it'll come to me all the bits and pieces. Anyhow I'm going to stop rabbiting away and put this on to, to upload. If there are any questions, please ask. Um, you, you know by now I love talking. Um, and uh, you know, it's, they say it's good to talk. I probably talk too much. Anything there that is of added interest, I don't know. No. Anyhow, I'm going to end it here and uh, say goodnight to you all again. Thanks for watching. And uh, as I say, I'll catch you all tomorrow. Thanks again. Thank you.